everybody, it's Misty Doan, and welcome to another uh, Missouri Star Live. We have some very special guests today, as you can see. Jenny is here today, and my niece and her granddaughter, Ella, Ella Jane, is here with us. And uh, we're so excited to have you here with us, Ella. Thanks for being here. No problem. <laughs> no problem. She's a little shy, so... So uh, I, we told her that everyone was so nice, so make sure you give Ella some love in the comments. We're excited to have her here with us today. So let's see where everybody's tuning in from. I noticed our friend Martha when we first hopped on. Hi, Martha. Hi, Martha. Thank you for being here with us. We've got Cheryl in Maine and Cindy in the UK. Thank you guys for watching. Anybody good on uh, YouTube? What do you mean good? There's lots of good any cool on any cool places I should say <laughs> on YouTube. Cool place. Every place is cool. <laughs> All right. Well, either way, today we're so excited um, to be announcing. We're trying out a new thing for sewing with kids. It's something you wanted to do for a long time, right? Jenny? I have wanted to do sewing with kids for a long time. Yes. They're the next generation, and my I'm just passionate about. If you don't share what you have in your head right. before you go, that goes with you. Yeah. And so I'm passionate about that. So. I've, tried to get everything out of my head into Ella's. Yes, so Ella's Just. here, and uh, and so you actually made an elephant quilt a few years ago with Grandma, right? Yeah. Yes. A long time a ago. A long time ago. And, and so, she was just a wee child. Yes, and so we've recreated that and we've got a uh, printable uh, pattern for you guys in the, the link in the post or the description on YouTube or Facebook that's got um, a pattern for you to trace. And then from here, so we'll start with this, and then this is actually going to be a series um, that we'll be releasing every Saturday from August 11th through September 1st. At 9 a.m. Central Time, we'll release a different special Sewing with Kids video. Yeah, so, we've been and Sewing with Kids. Yes, it'll be really fun. We'll release those both on Facebook and YouTube. And so I will let you guys get to it. All right, and perfect. And bounce out of here. So have awesome. fun. So the fun thing about this whole Sewing with Kids thing is, honestly, um, uh, well, first of all, you get to sew with kids, and that's fun. They see things in a whole different light, and we've been working on some videos with some other of my grandchildren of things that they've wanted to make and try, and uh, and it's been really fun. I love it. I love it. I think that um, kids are a lot more freer, or, or more free in their in the way they choose things and pick things. So, I was telling Ella, I was reminding her that her about her first elephant quilt, and she corrected me and said that. <laughs> She actually made a quilt before that, and I, then I remembered. But um, it was a quilt for your teacher. Yeah. And and do you remember how old you were? I was like, Maybe I don't eight? know, I was in first grade. Oh, first grade. You were teeny. Uh, and so she was in first grade, and she wanted to make a quilt for her teacher, and your, your mom was not very happy about that, was she? She wanted Ella to keep her first quilt, but she wanted to give it to her teacher. And so uh, that was really fun. So Ella loves elephants because her name is Ella. And, uh, and we wanted to, she wanted to make an elephant quilt. So this is actually the, the little quilt that she made originally. And we're going to show this to you right here. And this is the quilt. The pattern is based off of this quilt right here. Hold it up real high, Ella. And, um, and basically uh, the pattern is based off of this and looks like this. And Ella put some nice, look at this. She put. She just sewed two big pieces of cuddle together and put them on the back. Uh, I, you know, my one of my favorite things about cuddle on the back is how how greatly the stitch pattern shows. It's just really fun. And how cool is that? Two different pieces, two scraps, and yet it makes a nice back. All right, we got to show them how to do this. So the quilt, uh, the fabric we're using today is on this quilt right here. This is the one that we're using. And I, when I knew we were going to get to do an elephant quilt. I wanted to recreate it. Now, one of the things that was fun for me is that um, when I teach children how to quilt, uh, I start off with this lined paper. Do you remember doing this? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. So I take the thread out of my sewing machine, and they have to sew, and they just have to stay on the lines with their needle. They have to, I, I have to know that they can control the paper, and literally they just, we just put it under here and let them stitch on the lines. And once they can stay on the lines pretty good, then I know that, that they can do it. The other thing that was interesting with Ella is that um, I kept trying to have her sew on my sewing machine. And she kept, she kept, uh, she'd get down to the end and she'd kind of veer off. And she was so frustrated about it. 
and um, and I, I realized that I thought maybe the sewing machine was too fast. So we put her on another sewing machine and we slowed it way down so that our, our sewing machine had a stitch bar. We slowed, slowed it way down. And Ella said to me, um, she, she finished it up and it was just this perfect uh, quarter inch row. And she finishes up and she goes, oh, Grandma. I am a turtle sewer, not a rabbit. You know, she realized that she did much better sewing slower than she does fast. So, um, any little quilt like this is so easy. So, what I had Ella do is I had her go pick any layer cake that she wanted. And she chose a batik. And that was this one, this very, very first one. She chose a batik. And then we separated that pack into light and darks. So we have a pack right here, and uh, this is an Island Batik. Let me see what kind it is. Uh, it's called, I think it's called Blue Moon. Island Batik Blue Moon. We used a, a layer cake, and this one isn't open. We also have this Elephant Applique right here. You're going to need one of those, or any pattern. Now this is the cool thing, because if you don't love elephants, say, say you have a guy who loves dinosaurs, or flowers, or butterflies, or crowns, Go to the dollar store and buy a really young coloring book, like maybe a preschool coloring book. All the big patterns are in there. And you literally can trace anything and put it on, on, uh, on the pattern. So then what we did was we took our, our, our uh, layer cake, our 10 inch squares, and I let Ella sort them, darks and lights. And, uh, and I thought that was a good practice for her. Uh, as a young, she was much younger then, but you know, I mean now it would be a piece of cake, but um, when she was little I thought it was a much, uh, a good practice for her to sort lights and darks. And then we chose uh, a light one for the um, background and a dark one for the elephant, and then vice versa, half and half. So you can see on this right here, so we have a light with a dark elephant and a dark with a light elephant. And we just did that every other one. So Ella, why don't you choose the two colors we want to start with here? I've got some blocks already made, but um, does any of those uh, strike your fancy? I like this one. You like that blue one? Okay, what do you want for the background now? Um, so here we have, we have some lighter ones in here. We have that one. Uh, that one's kind of light. We've got, we don't have a lot of choices left because I used yeah. a lot of them. But I like the, purple. the purple? Perfect, pull that out. All right. So now we, we actually have a light box. When Ella and I did this first, we traced it. We were kind of on a window or somewhere. Oh no, I know what I did. I took a Sharpie marker and made this elephant really dark. Mm -hmm. And then we laid the heat and bond over it. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna have Ella do this. And we have a light box now, Ella, and you're gonna, you're gonna crack up because this is so much easier. So just lay your elephant applique on there. Turn your light box on. And then we're just going to lay. So this is um, heat and bond light right here. And uh, depending upon the size of your pattern is how much you're going to need. And it's called heat and bond feather light. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this over here. And we want to take good advantage of our heat and bond. And so we'll scoot it kind of to the edge. And Ella, I'm going to let you go ahead and trace this. And... This is, you know, one of the fun things when I was sewing with the kids was I just let them do any work they could do, I let them do. And so Ella was probably about, hmm, well, first grade when we started. And then I actually think the optimum age for teaching children is about 10. But we, um, and be sure and let me know if there's any, anybody has any questions when we're going along. So I think the optimum age is about 10, and, uh, and they've got pretty good motor skills by the time they're 10, and they can do it. And so I let Ella trace, and I let her cut, and I let her iron. Yeah. All right, so, so then what I did was I actually took my, my paper and moved it down so we could trace another right next to it. So go ahead and trace again. And you're going to trace, for this quilt right here, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. We have 20, we need 20 elephants tracing. So, um, I'm sorry, 20 elephants traced. So it, uh, you know, you can keep them busy for a bit of time tracing elephants. Ella, now that you're older, is there something else you'd rather put on a quilt than an elephant? 
No, you still like elephants. You have a thing for unicorns too. Oh, don't I you? like unicorns. She does like unicorns. That would be a fun, uh, a fun quilt too, wouldn't it? All right. So now we have these two elephants. You're going to do that 20 times, and then I'm just going to move this over here, and in this extra space right here, I'm going to trace the ear. And you can see Ella was did a much better job of tracing. Uh, I'm just doing it really quick. Now, one of the things that's cool about this to remember is that when you cut out the, the paper, we don't have to be perfect. So we can just cut this out generally like this. And then you're going to iron it onto, which one do you want to be the elephant, the purple or the blue? Blue. All right. So you're going to iron this onto the blue. Now, what we want to talk about when we iron this is... I'm going to trim off a little bit more down by his feet right here, and we're going to put him close to the bottom on here, and then you're just going to iron him on. So touch that iron and get it hot. Yeah, go ahead and bring it up here and just iron it. It's just about um, about five seconds uh, on it. We'll thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand four, thousand five, and it should stick pretty good. I'm actually going to look on here. Let's see exactly how long we're supposed to iron it. Because that will be helpful to people. Uh, circular motion for two seconds. Woo! <laughs> okay, only two seconds. Whoops! Oh, wait, here. Down here it says. Oh, no, that's a, that's a different language. Uh, if material... Uh, uh, four to six seconds. All right. Four to six seconds, so we were good. Five was right in the middle of that. All right. And then I'm just going to roll this up, and we'll move this out of the way so we can start. So on this, what I want you to do is now cut out that elephant. I'm going to set this back here. Hey, can you cut that out on that square in the middle? Yeah, can you lean over here so they can see it a little better? It's, it's hard to cut out on the square in the middle, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. And what's fun about these big shapes is that, you know, they're pretty easy for uh, little hands. Now, how old are you now, Ella? Thirteen. Thirteen. You know, I have a lot of grandchildren, so I don't really actually remember how old you are, but I know about. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know which number grandchild you are? Oh my gosh, I don't either. I should I should have looked at that. I think you're in the middle, though. You are definitely smack in the middle, because we got some 20-year-olds and we got some babies. <laughs> so she's right in the middle. All right, now, when Ella was little, she would make some mistakes cutting. I still do. And we don't worry about that. So, to be honest... When we started with this, um, it didn't matter what she did. It didn't matter what fabric she picked. I never corrected any choice she made or anything she did because I wanted her to feel awesome and successful at what she'd done. All right, so here's our elephant right here. And then we're just going to peel this off. So you can go ahead and peel this off. And then here's our background square. So we're going to put that right in the middle of the square. And again, I, you know, wherever it goes is fine. And then you're going to iron that on. Now, on the quilt we first made for Ella, we have a nice big, you know, five and a half inch border. On this quilt back here, um, I actually was a little... <laughs> They love it when I do this. Um, I, I felt really badly about this whole big piece being waste here. So I went ahead and cut a four inch strip off of here, like this, to all my squares, like that. And then when I got done, I sewed them together end to end. And my, my lighter ones I cut in half and sewed those together end to end. And that made my little border on this one because I didn't want to waste that. All right, so now we have it on here. And I am. You can sew around this, you can do a little zigzag, you can do a straight stitch, you can do a buttonhole stitch, and I'm gonna go do that buttonhole stitch right now. So my machine has a little buttonhole stitch, 
And I'm gonna go around, and I like to start on the bottom of the feet, and I'm gonna go across here. Ella, come watch me. So, um, the one thing Ella asked me, she says, I'll go on cam camera with you, Grandma, but I don't wanna sew on camera. <laughs> Now, one of the things that um, happened when Ella was much younger is she'd sew along and um, she'd miss the elephant. And she'd say, Grandma, I miss the elephant. And I'd say, just go over it again. And some of those elephants had, you know, you went around them a few times, didn't you? And, um, and I loved the, I loved the, I loved that they were all different. And some of the elephants had, you know, we sewed around them a few times to get them to hold on. Because not everybody's perfect, right? Gosh, you guys, you're awfully quiet out there. Do you have any questions? Oh, you, you messed up the audio? Just for a minute. <laughs> So what questions do we have? Let's answer some questions. I feel like I'm doing a tutorial, not a Facebook Live. I want to answer some questions. Well, well Smitten Kitten's back, so we got to say hi to her. Smitten Kitten? She's back. She's been gone. We missed her for the last few weeks. We did miss her. Welcome back. This is awesome. Hope all is well with you, Smitten Kitten. That's a fun name, isn't it? Smitten Kitten. So now we're just heading right around the back. And it helps that this is on a little bit slower go. This, my stitch is a little bit slower. But if you miss, you don't have to take it out, do you, Ella? You just go around again. All right, we're back right down here to where we started. There we go, and I'm just gonna sew over it. And then we're gonna bring it out here. And we are gonna clip this right here. Okay, so, we so got a question about the fusible. Look on here where you can, um, you can see him. See, and I didn't even do a perfect job. I've got a little whoop in here and a little whoo whoo there, you know, but it just works and it goes and it all goes together. So when we put this together, let me show you these. All right, Mom, we have some questions. We just sewed them together like this. We did a, we, oh wait, we did a dark background. Are you ignoring me? You I'm ignoring not ignoring me, you, no. I'm just getting ready to set this beautiful thing out here. Look at these. Look how cute this is. So cute. Oh, we forgot to sew his ear on. We, we have to do his ear. Where's his ear? It's still on there. Still on the paper. <laughs> You gotta keep me in line, Ella. We want this elephant to be able to hear, don't we? Yeah, definitely. All right. All right, let's sew uh, an ear. I like to pick the ear from a different fabric. So let's just get one of these pieces right here. And let's give him a, what color ear do you want? Not a blue one. Purple, dark yeah. purple? Yeah. This one or this one? I love that one. All right, iron it on. All right, questions. Questions about the fusible? What do you want to know about the fusible? Oh, sure. Now you'll take questions. No, I'm ready. There's all kinds. Of, I was trying to get you. Okay, the fusible. Uh -huh. You want to know about the fusible? Do you leave a raw edge? Do you use invisible thread? All those are options. So uh, when I sew with kids, now sewing with kids is completely different than it is than I do sewing with myself. Because with sewing with kids, I find it's easier to use the th um, what it, you know the thread that's on there so that it's you can see it. I just find that's a little easier for them because they can see where they're going a little better. Um, also, we're gonna have to iron him on. Also, the um, the fusible is a feather weight feather weight light. It's called Heat and Bond Light. And you just, I draw all the elephants first. So we'll draw 20 elephants. And you draw them on the paper side. And then this shiny side over here, that's where the glue is. And the pattern is already reversed for you. So all your elephants will go this one direction. 
Are you sure you don't want to sew this one ear on? You sure? <laughs> oh, Ella. <laughs> All right. So um, the heat and bond light is so handy because, you know, honestly, any little thing you want to draw works. I need more questions. They asked if we sold the light box and there are questions about it. Oh, the light box? Yeah. Ella, grab that light box up here. Where is it? It's right behind you, right there again. Right here. There yeah, it is. Found it. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is called Cutter Pillar, the Cutter Pillar Glow, and it is actually rechargeable, so you can charge it up. It has a little plug in thing right over here. You can charge it up, and it has a, it's a touch on. They're pretty handy. They're, they're pretty tough. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think they're, they're, you know, they're pretty tough. And they're just super skinny, handy. They also have a mat that you can put on and cut with them. I think I have one somewhere. So you can cut right on it, but of course, I'd, I wouldn't want to do that. Somebody asked if there's any other option besides heat and bond. Oh, yeah. So, I can't get it in their country. Okay. So if you can't get it in your country, what I would do is I would use a, um, I would use a glue stick or, um, you know, any kind of glue and I would just glue it onto the elephant, you know, just put some strips across it because basically all you're trying to do is hold this thing in place so you can sew around it. Uh, and so, you know, the heat and bond is, I mean, you don't even really need that. You could use a glue stick and just glue across it and put it on there. Uh, or school glue, put a few dots around it. If you use a school glue, like um, an Elmer's glue or, a, you know, the cheap that, that cheap glue, it actually washes out. I, I actually use it um, to uh, hold down my bindings and all kinds of things. So I like the I like the glue. Glue's a great idea. Yeah, if you don't have heat and bond, definitely um, heat and bond is the easiest route to go. But a few glue sticks is going to hold this guy on there. So So that makes it, you know, that makes it work. All right, what else? Somebody asked about using freezer paper. Uh, freezer paper is generally used for iron-on applique, and freezer paper is not going to make your elephant stick to the paper. If, the free, if, you iron the, if you iron your elephant onto your freezer paper, the elephant will stick on the freezer paper, but when you peel that freezer paper off, it just um, it, it doesn't have any stick to it. So it's not going to actually stick to it. Now you can, so they use freezer paper more as a pattern than as an adhesive. Um, and generally it's used for uh, needle turn, which these big shapes would be awesome for needle turn if you wanted to, if you want to do that. So when I say needle turn, what I mean is this is a raw edge right here. And needle turn is when you actually just take and fold the very edge of what you're doing under and then applique. I have a whole video on needle, needle turn applique because when I broke my leg, I couldn't get away from my friends and they taught me the needle turn. You know, <laughs> I was stuck in bed. They asked if the glue stick would ruin your sewing machine. Not the right glue stick. So as long, we have a stick called the lapel stick and um, there, are, there are some glue sticks that will glue up your needle really bad, but the ones we have are made for that. There's also, um, um, Sue Daly has a good glue stick. It's a, it's like a pen and you could just put that on there and attach that on there. And we and had an all well. caps. When is the next quilt days? I want to plan my trip. Quilt days. What are the, what is quilt days? What is quilt days? You mean birthday bash? Yeah. We have a birthday bash coming up. We have birthday bash coming up the third weekend in September. Um, if that's what you're talking about. September 20th through 22nd. September 20th through the 22nd. What else? Do you want to draw more elephants? Do we want to make an, more? <laughs> also, they want to know about the new sewing machine, but I think we're forbidden to talk about it until Wait, one, more week. one more week. Oh, one more week, and we'll talk to you about these ever sewn sewing machines that are so nice. That she we also can't asked talk about. if the men in your family sew, men oh. in your life. <laughs> So all the men in my family sew. My husband sews, my son sew. Jacob made his wife a queen-sized Dresden quilt for Christmas one year. I had to actually take pictures of him doing it because uh, he was sure she wouldn't believe, Misty wouldn't believe that he actually did that. 
And so, so uh, he's made a quilt. Al's made a quilt. You know, the interesting thing when Al made a quilt was um, he kind of wants everybody in the company to make a quilt. And when, uh, and he decided he better start with that. And so he thought, I'm going to make a quilt. And this is going to be a piece of cake because I've been watching my mom do this for all my life. And, uh, and he sat down, you know, he, he did the cutting and that was way harder than he thought. He, you know, picking out fabric way harder than he thought. Putting it together way harder than he thought. But finally he gets that thing all together and he's quilting it. And he's on the quilt machine and he just stopped and he was just like, um, he was just like stunned. And he looked at me and he said, mom, I've never put 20 hours of my life into anything I was willing to give away. And that's, that's what most quilters do. I mean, 83% of all quilts that we make, we give to somebody else. And so that was really an eye opener for her. Josh loves to quilt. Josh has been on a couple of tutorials. He likes they to design and make quilts. So they asked what, what size square it is, and they also asked where oh, they could find idea. an elephant pattern. So this is a ten by ten square, and basically whatever size your pattern is, then you want to uh, you you know you want to make sure that your pattern, whatever you're cutting out, fits on your square. These are just uh, layer cake squares, and so these are these right here, and they're this size, ten inches, and you can buy those already cut, which I liked. Um, and also the elephant pattern right here is a free printable download for you. So we're going we're gonna to include this and um, pattern information, how to put it together. And out of a layer cake, because uh, you're going to make 20 10-inch blocks, and you're going to get a quilt. Let me see what size this is. Uh, 50 by 59. So this is a great size quilt. I mean, this is perfect uh, baby quilt size or lap size or cuddle up and watch television size, you know, it's a, it's a good size. Don't you think? You, yeah. You're so... <laughs> Miss Ella. All right, don't, doesn't anybody have any questions for Ella? Come on, you guys. <laughs> All right, what else, Jake? There was one that said if, um, about using ice by fabric where the elephant was. Oh, the ice by fabric would be really cool. Yeah, that's a really cute idea. So for those of you who don't know, ice by fabric, um, when my kids were little, we'd drive along in the car and we'd play a game, I spy, you know, and they'd, they'd pick something they thought nobody else would guess, you know, and um, they'd ask questions about it until they guessed what it was. And there's also I spy books. And I spy quilts are basically made with fabric that has, like you'll have a fabric that has um, elephants or um, uh, stars or, I mean, all the novelty fabric, any of the novelty fabric, cars, cats, dogs, anything like that. And I make quilts of those for my grandkids because then they can look and you can say, um, I spy a dog. And then they have to find the dog on the quilt and that sort of thing. And that's a... That's a, just a fun way of doing it. And you right. could use All the right, ice we got some questions here. for Ella. They're pouring in now. Oh, they're pouring oh. in now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, Ella, when did you first start sewing? In first grade, I think. How old is I? Probably like? about seven. Seven or Six eight. Six or seven, yeah. They also want to know who your parents are. Oh, so who are your parents? Sarah and Seth. Sarah and Seth, my daughter Sarah is her mom, and Sarah is over everything that happens in town. She's one of the owners of Missouri Star. And Seth, he's like her grandpa. They do all, everything else that needs to, you know, they, do, they just do everything else. All right, and we have another one. Ella, what's your favorite kind of fabric? What do you look for in fabrics? I don't know. I, my favorite color is blue, and I like blue a lot, I yeah. guess. Favorite color is blue, just like her grandma. <laughs> what else? Do you plan to uh, follow in your grandma's footsteps and teach tutorials too? Ooh. Um, maybe. <laughs> I mean, Ooh. I'm shy, so. She's shy. She'll have to get over her shyness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. They, here's, here's a good one. They want to hear a funny story about grandma. Do you oh. have one? Put you on the spot, kind of. <gasps> Uh, well, I don't know. I do. So one of the things I do with my grandkids is I send them funny jokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like sometimes I wake up in the morning and get a text from Grandma. It's just these funny jokes. They're, they're very corny. Yeah. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> I always get back big smiley faces with exclamation <laughs> points and hearts. <clears throat> They're pretty funny. <laughs> OK. 
Can we think right, of one? I... What was one I... I can't The really... only one I can think of is the toilet paper one, which I... It's just old. I haven't sent that to anybody in a long time. <laughs> well, I want to hear it. I haven't, I haven't heard oh, that one. Oh, why did the toilet paper roll down the hill? Why? To get to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that one's funny. <laughs> that, that's a good that one. one's All right, funny. I think good. we're good. All right. So any more, any more questions on uh, any of this that I can help you with? All right. Let me go over this little border one time. We put a little inch and a half border around our blocks right here. And then this little outer border, now these instructions are not in your pattern because the pattern is based off of this one that has a nice big five and a half inch border. But I use the top scraps off my, um, off my 10 inch square. I cut them up and I cut them into four inch strips and I left my dark ones whole and I cut my light ones right in half. And then I just sewed them together long, long, long and I put... Uh, on the sides and then across the top and the bottom. So I didn't even have to buy border fabric for this and it made a cute little quick quilt. So that's how I did this one. This one, if you do this one with a big border, you're just going to need about a yard, uh, um, a yard of border fabric for this one. Are my elephants going the right direction? They're, no. up, they're upside, upside down. down. And uh, so hold this out here, Ella. Hey, you guys, thanks for joining us today. Hope you've covered all that you need to know to make a quick and easy quilt. Don't forget to check out those easy patterns. Um, from a, You can get them from a coloring book. And there's... Um, and did, we, did we announce the what's happening with this at the beginning? Mm -hmm. yeah. So stay tuned. Saturday, okay, so, right? so there's, a, there's a link in the, um, there's a link in the description, description for the elephant quilt and pattern and print out if you want to make your own elephant quilt. And just start watching because every Saturday from here on out, I'm going to have a quilt where I make something fun with one of my grandkids and we did all kinds of projects. So every Saturday from here, from for the next month, we're going to release a video every month. So uh, let us every know. Week. Every, week. every week. I mean, sorry, next every month. week. We're going to every release week. a video every week. And, uh, and so let us know, you know, if you love these, uh, especially see, have your kids watch them and your grandkids to see if it's something they really can do. Because if this is helpful, I'd love to do this. I think this would be really fun. All right. Awesome. Thanks, so guys. Anyway, for thanks for joining in. us today on Facebook Live. From me and Ella, we'll see you later.